Welcome to the CFA Connections how-to tutorial on Caviar. In this tutorial we'll cover where does caviar come from, the types of caviar, the categories and terms you should be aware of, ordering and purchasing recommendations, labeling requirements and how to properly read them, how to store caviar, serving sizes, and its nutritional benefits. Enjoy! In case you're not familiar with caviar or have never tasted it, first, why not? Because it's amazing. And second, here's a brief overview of what is caviar. Caviar is unfertilized fish eggs, also known as fish roe, and comes from the sturgeon family of fish. Now, although many assume this, high quality caviar does not have a salty taste at all. The taste of caviar is very complex. It has a consistency of butter and melts in your mouth, and it's often described as a breath of fresh, clean ocean air. Here's a few facts about the sturgeon. They are one of the few surviving bony fish, the bones are soft, which have retained their prehistoric appearance. They have a unique skeletal structure, so they have no bones in their flesh, but rather they have bony plates on their outside. They can live to be over a hundred years old and there are reports of some up to 200 years old. And there are 24 species existing worldwide. There are several types of caviar and we'll be focusing on what is known as the big five, which are Beluga, Ocetra, Kaluga, Savruga, and American. Here's a brief overview of each of the big five, starting with Beluga. It's regarded as the finest, most prestigious caviar in the world. Beluga caviar was made illegal in the United States in 2005 due to the species of sturgeon being critically endangered. The 2005 ban on U.S. imports of Russian Beluga was the first unilateral U.S. effort to save the species from extinction. According to the National Wildlife Federation, between 1985 and 2005, the nonprofit organization states beluga experienced a massive decline by nearly 90%. Beluga caviar has large pearlescent eggs and is a light glistening gray in color. It's prized for its smooth buttery texture and a rich and subtle flavor that melts in your mouth. Ocetra. Now, it's not beluga, but it is regarded as the second in command in terms of caviar prestige. Ocetra caviar varies in color from golden to brown, has firm grains of medium-sized eggs and a nutty and rich flavor and is slightly smaller than beluga. When it comes to Ocetra caviar, the lighter the eggs, the older the fish, therefore the more expensive. Kaluga. Kaluga caviar is often referred to as river beluga and is considered to be the world's largest freshwater sturgeon. The hybrid Kaluga caviar is a sustainable answer to the endangered beluga. As such, consumption of Kaluga caviar replicates and for some may even exceed the exquisite culinary experience of the illegal beluga caviar. It's incredibly similar to beluga, creamy, smooth, with an almost buttery texture, with a great firm pop, and is today one of the top of the line caviars on the market. I know for me, it's my absolute favorite. Savruga. True Savruga caviar combines Savruga, Sterlet, and Siberian sturgeon caviar, meaning it is difficult to obtain in its purest form. It reproduces the quickest of the sturgeon species, therefore is much more available than the other types, which translates into lower market prices for this delicious caviar. While other caviars dissolve in your mouth, Savruga playfully crackles and pops and has a more intense flavor. American Caviar In the 19th century, the United States was a leading producer of caviar. Over the past few years, it has had a resurgence and American caviar has once again become popular. It's derived from Lake Sturgeon, Wild Atlantic Sturgeon, and White Sturgeon. American caviar can refer to any caviar that comes from the U.S. That means not only from the sturgeon, but also from some other alternatives, such as the bowfin, hackleback, paddlefish, 
white and lake sturgeon, and salmon, which is known as red caviar. Now, let's talk about the world's most expensive caviar, Almas caviar. This caviar comes exclusively from the albino beluga sturgeon that are more than 100 years old and the eggs are white and smooth. While many sturgeons live to be over 100, albino beluga sturgeons are fairly rare, living mostly on the Iranian side of the Caspian Sea. The cost is approximately 35,000 US dollars per kilogram. <laughs> There's also Strotarga Bianco, which is white gold caviar. This caviar is derived from the Siberian albino sturgeon raised at a tiny fish farm by Walter Gruhl and his son in Salzburg, Austria. Once harvested, the row are dehydrated and finely grated layers of 22 karat edible gold leaf are sprinkled into it. Cost, at the time of this video, 113,600 US dollars per kilogram. Why? <laughs> because they can. We're now going to talk about caviar categories and terms you should be familiar with. Take note that caviar regulations and standards are not universal. Terms like reserve, special reserve, royal, and gold standard, these are typically only marketing terms and have nothing to do in terms of quality. There are two grades for each type of sturgeon. First is grade one caviar. This is the highest quality, featuring large, firm, fully intact eggs with the most ideal color and quality. Grade 2 caviar, it does not have the same perfect form and may contain even some broken eggs and color variation. However, it's still very good. Another term you may see or hear is malosol. It's a Russian word that literally translates to little salt. And this term indicates a low salt content under 3% in the caviar. With less salt added in the curing process, you get more of the natural flavors of the eggs and can expect higher quality overall. When ordering and purchasing caviar, there actually are strict caviar labeling requirements and per sites, which is the convention on international trade in the endangered species, they are, all containers of caviar must have a non-reusable label which means the label cannot be removed without being damaged. The label must either seal the container or the caviar must be packaged in such a manner as to permit visual evidence of any opening of the container. There are two types of labels. A label confirming the caviar was packed by a processing plant in the country of origin or a label confirming the caviar was repackaged in another country. And here are some examples of each of the label types. First, a country of origin label. CITES has established three letter codes for the identification of sturgeon, hybrids, and mixed species. As an example here, HUS is the code for giant or great sturgeon beluga. Now, this is the most important code for you to check on your labels to confirm you are indeed receiving the type of caviar you are purchasing. Next is the source of caviar code. There will be a W or a C, meaning W for wild caught or C for captive bred or also known as farm raised. There'll be the country of origin. This example RU means Russian Federation. It will include the year of the harvest and the official registration code of the processing plant and the lot number which corresponds to the caviar tracking system. The country of repackaging label will differ slightly from the country of origin label and I'll point out the main difference here. The species code, the source code, and the year all look the same as the origin label. Here, PER is the code for Persian sturgeon. The source code W is for wild caught and the year of repackaging is 2023. The main difference is in the registration code. We'll have a repackaging plant two letter code before the number. In this case, it's Persian, so it was originally packaged in Iran, the Caspian Sea area, 
and the DE means it was repackaged in Germany. Seeing a two-letter code before this number is the easiest way of identifying it's been repackaged elsewhere. There is a resource handout listing all the label codes and other caviar information on the CFA Connections Source Info and Documents page and we've included a link in this video's description. Great care needs to be taken when storing caviar, especially on board a private jet. Caviar should always be stored in a refrigerator at about 32 degrees Fahrenheit, 0 Celsius. Preferably, the container should be placed on a sealed bag of ice in refrigeration to maintain the ideal temperature. Whether you're storing an open container or a sealed tin from the store, make sure to keep it in the coldest part of the refrigerator or your cold storage compartment. On board, if it came in a sealed cooler bag with ice packs, keep it in the cooler bag and store it in refrigeration. Otherwise, it may be best stored in an ice drawer with baggies of ice flanking the container. Now, one of the most commonly asked questions when cabin crew are planning to order caviar is, how much do I get? <laughs> well, it's very subjective, but the standard serving sizes are as follows. If you're serving caviar by itself, typically you will need one to two ounces, which is 30 to 50 grams per person. If you're serving caviar as a garnish, typically you will need a half to one ounce, which is 15 to 30 grams. This chart is also included in the caviar handout on the connection. Did you know caviar has many nutritional benefits? A one ounce or 28 gram serving of caviar provides 75 calories, seven grams of protein, five grams of fat, healthy fat, one gram carbs, 236% of the daily value of vitamin B12, 19% of the daily value of iron, 18% of the daily value of sodium. It's also high in omega-3, vitamin C, vitamin E, and vitamin A. If you're planning on serving caviar, you need to make sure you have all of the accompaniments and service wear to properly serve your caviar. The caviar server, the caviar spoon, crushed ice, along with creme fraiche, hard-boiled egg whites, hard-boiled egg yolks, red onion, chives, lemon, blini, or toast points. We'll go into greater detail on all these accompaniments, service tools, and how to serve it on board in the Serving Caviar tutorial. So fun. As always, thanks for watching.